Father, I want to commit this time to you, even as we open your word, you help me to once again download what is in your heart that you want me to speak, Lord, to your people at this season and time, not only for ourselves or our church, but also for our nation. Right this time, once again, we remember the people in Sabah. We pray, Father God, that you will comfort the bereaved families, not only from Malaysia, elsewhere, but also from Singapore. We pray, Father Lord, that you will comfort them and grant them even your con con comfort and, and consolation. And we thank you even for the guides and for the brave rescuers who will risk their lives to rescue these dear people. And we pray, Father God, that really all will be well and everyone will be safe, Lord. Those remaining ones especially, they will be found. So, Father, we want to commit even what has happened to you and we trust you, Father, as we want to stand still and hear what you want to say to us for our nation. Thank you, Father. Commit this time to you now in Jesus' precious name. And of course, people say, Amen and Amen. Okay, um, I want to share with you this morning on a message entitled, uh, The SOP of an open heaven. SOP, as you know, stands for Standard Operating Procedures. All right, so this is a message that God has laid upon my heart even before I left for my break. And uh, even as I review what has happened in the last six months of this year, you know that already June has arrived. If you don't know that, you know we are in June already. Six months have passed by. And so it's we're coming now into the second half of the year. As I look back at what has happened so far for us specifically in this church, I am amazed at the number of testimonies that I've received, even I have in my hand right now, uh, even a list of all the testimonies from my leaders and from everybody of what God has been doing in their lives, spiritually, in their families, and so on. And I'm amazed at, as we uh, even... Uh, have the theme that God gave to us on spirit breakout. In many, many ways, God and the Spirit of God has begun to break out in many, many ways. And in fact, uh, at our leaders re uh, media leaders review, next month, I have informed my media department to document the testimonies and I will show the leaders even in a media leaders review as we gather together in July, uh, just here firsthand how God has indeed uh, broken through in many, many families and lives. But one thing I want to say to you is that I really believe that this is only the beginning. And when God put this message in my heart about an open heaven, I want to share with you one single truth that I will repeat again several times even this morning or this afternoon. That if you forget everything that I share, you remember this one sentence, and it is this. I believe with all my heart that it is God's will and desire that every single one of us, without exception, who owns the name of the Lord, operate under an open heaven in our lives. Can I repeat this? I sincerely believe that it is the delight and the desire of Almighty Father God, like every father who loves his children, that you and I operate under an open heaven in our lives, for our family, and for our work. Turn with me to two portions of Scripture. You follow me even as I open the Scripture to you. So that at the end of the day, you know that it is not my words, but certainly the Word of God that confirms and affirms what this message is all about. Luke chapter 3, the first passage is from the New Testament, and the second passage is from the Old Testament. Both very familiar passages of Scripture, but both expound and complement on the other. Luke chapter 3, verse 21 documents the time when Jesus Christ was baptized in water and in the Spirit. Luke 3.21, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, you underline as he was praying, heaven was opened. 
And the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Turn with me now to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Put your finger in Luke 3. We'll come back to, you, to it later. Very familiar passage of Scripture in 2 Chronicles which we all use when we want to encourage people to pray. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 11. When Solomon had finished the temple of the Lord and the royal palace and had succeeded in carrying out all that he had in mind to do in the temple of the Lord and in his own palace, the Lord appeared to him at night and said, I've heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. And this is what God says. Verse 13, when I shut up the heavens. Wow, who is it that shuts the heaven? God. The same one that opens the heaven also shuts it. What happens when he shuts the heaven? There is no rain. Not only will there be no rain, locusts will come to devour the land. Not only that, a plague will be sent among my people. Wow. How then do we reverse that? If my people who are called by my name, i.e. those who own the name of not anybody, it is therefore incumbent upon the church of God to stand in the gap on behalf of the land. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and they pray, once again seek the face of God, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven Forgive their sin, heal the land. And now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. And I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name, God says, will be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. Heaven is mentioned twice. When I shut the heavens and when I hear from heaven. When God shuts the heaven, He doesn't hear. When God opens the heaven, He hears. What happens when God shuts the heaven? Three things. There is no rain. Why is rain so important to Israel? Israel is agricultural. No rain means no produce. No rain means no fruits. No nothing. No rain is very important to Israel. So when God says, I shut the heavens, there will be no rain, there will be famine. Not only will there be famine, locusts will come and devour the land. Everything that locusts come across will be demolished and plague will be among the people. I prepared this message about a month or so ago before I went for a break. When I came back and touched down on Friday morning at about 8 something, it was the taxi driver who told me, have you heard what happened to Sabah this morning? I said, what happened? There was an earthquake. What? Sabah? Malaysia? Never happened before in the entire history of the nation. We tout ourselves that this is a rainbow country and we are spared from natural disasters. I am still asking God, what are you saying to our nation? I don't have the answer. 
I really don't have the answer. But I do not believe that it is fortuitous that over one year, we had two tragic plane crashes. And now, unbelievable. An earthquake struck a world heritage place, Mount Kinabalu. God is thundering a message to our nation. I don't know, honestly, what he's saying, and I will seek God. But one thing I do know, we have to pray and repent before God. That I know. I was told that in the 24-7 prayer meeting that you all had, the church had last week, it was a wonderful time of seeking God and being in the presence of God. And I would applaud all the ZLs and all the leaders who led the prayer meetings. And I want to thank you that even in our absence, you've done very well. Let's give God a clap offering for them. Really, really. They've done so well. And it speaks so well for me that even as a senior pastor, when I'm away, I know the church is going strong. It's doing well. And I, will, and I ask some of them, what did God say when we sought His face for 24 hours? Some of them say two things, pastor, two things. Holiness, repentance. That was before the earthquake. Absolutely right. As a nation, we have to come before God. But whose responsibility? Those that call upon the name of the Lord has to stand in the gap. If my people who are called by my name the responsibility is not on those people who don't know the Lord. And my prayer that even as we begin now to seek the face of God and repent on behalf of the country and the land, heavens will open over our country. That is my prayer. I believe that it is truly God's desire that you and I operate under an open heaven. I remember on the 28th of April this year at one of our prayer meetings on a Tuesday night, when the presence of God was so thick and so awesome, I, 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 I recommend and, and, and advise you, encourage you to come to pray. Just come and soak yourself in the presence of God and you will draw from you this desire to pray, this hunger for the presence of God. By ourselves, sometimes we can't. We are so torn by so many things of the world. But when we intentionally carve out time and spend time with God, God speaks. And in that particular prayer meeting on the 28th of April, when God was present and we worshipped Him, Elder Kuntan, I remember, stood up and under the authority and the presence of God, read, Deuteronomy chapter 28, read the first 14 verses, and I've heard that passage and read many, many times. So what struck me at that point in time was verse 12. Because I was already mulling on the whole theme of the open heaven, and I didn't see that until that day, and Elder Kuntan opened the scripture and read first 14 verses. When it came to verse 12, this is it. Come, read it with me. Will you read it with me? Can you read it with me? All right, those in the balcony as well. Shall we read it together? Deuteronomy 28, verse 12. Read out loud. One, two, three. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of His bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations and will borrow from none. And in verse 13, we'll begin with the head, not the tail, the top, not the bottom. What struck me was that the Lord will open the heavens. In other words, all the blessings in the first 14 verses of Deuteronomy 28 occurred because there was an open heaven. 
and again, rain. When God opens the heaven, rain. And the storehouse of the bounty will be full. And not only that, the work of your hands will be... You know what the work of your hands means? Your work. The labor. Whatever you put your hands to will succeed. There will not be a, 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 an obstacle, a hindrance. You will not be dull. You will know what to do, what not to do. When to do it as well. What to say, what not to say. Who to connect with. Wisdom of God will come to you. And individually and as a nation, we will lend and we will not borrow like now. And my prayer is that God will open the heavens for you and for me, individually, in our families, in our workplace, and collectively as a nation. You say, Pastor, what is that for me? I believe it is God's desire that you and I operate under an open heaven in our lives. Why don't we read this together? You hear me repeating that many, many times. Do you forget everything I say? You remember this. Let's read it with me, shall we? One, two, three. It is God's desire that we operate under an open heaven over our lives. I'll say it one more time convincingly. Will you do that? All right. One, two, three. Over our lives. Amen and amen. Let me quote Bill Johnson. In his book, Hosting God's Presence, he says this. He says, every believer, and I resonate with him, has an open heaven. For the believer, most closed heavens are between the years. Living as though the heavens were brass over us actually plays into the devil's hands as it puts us in a defensive posture. And this violates what Jesus has accomplished on the cross. This certainly doesn't mean that darkness isn't able to cast a long shadow over a person or even a city or a nation. But my attention must be on the provisions and the promises of Christ and the open heaven over me. My life must be lived in response to what the Father has done and is doing, and I like the last sentence. This is the life for you, for me, that Jesus has modeled for us. And I will show it from Scripture. And I will show it from Scripture that this is exactly what God wants us to do, that it is God's desire that you and I operate under an open heaven. You know, strangely, in the month of April, as I was mulling over this message, how to present it, how not only to present it, how to communicate it, because I sense in my spirit that this is what God wants us to hear, appropriate and internalize and to apply, not only as a message, uh, but something to apply it and then believe that God will do it. Why? Because it is biblical, it is the desire of God that we operate under an open heaven in our lives. And I remembered in the month of April, we had Robert Sasanga uh, here and a lot of us were there in the healing services. And I remembered on one of the three nights of healing service, he was holding my hand and he was asking me to run up and down. I was walking up and down with him, you know, and I felt as if I was walking on thin air. And then, then I remembered that he went up to the stage and uh, I don't know whether you remember or not, he did say that at that moment when the presence of God was so thick, God is saying to some of you a word. I don't know whether you remember or not. God has a word. Come and share it. And, and you know, many people have the word from God. And being Malaysians are shy, shy. La, huh? So very few came forward. But afterwards, I received, Pastor Lichu and I received emails from people who had the word. Why didn't you share it? Never mind. And one of them, a leader had this word 
that God gave to her during that moment from Revelations chapter 19. And this is the word that she received from verse 11 to verse 16. Very interesting. This is the word of the Lord. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. Who is this person? His eyes were like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. Surely this is Jesus. The armies of heaven follows him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean, and coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword, clearly the word of God, with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. Who is this? On his robe and on his thigh, he has his name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. When this word was given, I knew that this is what God confirms what I'm going to share today. That this was way before the earthquake. When heavens open, Jesus rides out, leads the army of God. And who is this King of kings and Lord of lords? He's the truth. He's the faithful one. Those of you who attended uh, the, the, the Timothy program that I did yesterday with the leaders will understand a little bit more why it is so important that the one single key of every leader is faithfulness. We have to be faithful to the very end and not give up. Why? Because he is called the faithful one of all the names. He is faithful. He is the truth. He is the justice. In other words, no injustice will ever be allowed. No falsehood. He is the bastion of truth. He is the pillar of justice. And he rides in front, leading the armies of God, King of kings, Lord of lords. When heavens open, the Lord comes and leads his army. One of the young adults had a vision of a battle tank. Same. Same. And I believe in my spirit that we have no fear. We only need at this time and season of our lives and our nation to run to God. Run to him. Because when heavens open and it is our portion, he will lead us. He will guide us. If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen? Amen. Come on, let's give God a clap offering. Should we do that? <laughs> what is the SOP then of an open heaven? If God desires and delights that we operate under an open heaven, what is the standard operating procedure? Luke 3. Luke 3, verse 21 and 22 gives us three SOPs. Very basic. Jesus models it. And he has gone ahead to model it as a man so that you and I can operate under the same anointing as he had because he delights that you and I operate under the open heaven in our lives. So Luke 3, 21 says, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was open. The word open is the word anagio, was torn, violently torn open. It's the same word in Isaiah 64, verse 1, when, 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 when the prophet Isaiah says, Lord, rend the heavens and come down. Rend it. Tear the heavens open. And when the heavens was torn on that day, it was never shut for Jesus. Holy Spirit then came down from an open heaven, descended on him in bodily form like a dove. A voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. What then is the SOP? Submit 
S. Obey. O. Pray. P. Very simple. It is not automatic, understand? It is not something that, oh, because I'm a Christian, I call the name of Jesus, therefore I operate under heaven. No. We have to respond appropriately. Submit and obey. And I believe in my spirit that this is what God wants you and I to do. At this season of our lives, we have to submit to Him. Submit means whatever He wants me to do, I submit and I obey Him. Everybody say submit. Obey. One more time. Submit. Obey. And this is exactly what Jesus did. As Jesus allowed Himself to be water baptized by a man, John the Baptist, do you think it was easy? The Son of God, you know, but coming down as a man, walking on planet Earth, now lining up together with all the sinners, waiting for His turn to be baptized by a human being. In fact, in Matthew 3, in the same passage, Matthew's account says when John the Baptist saw Jesus, you know what John the Baptist says? No. No, Jesus, I can't do that. Why? Because I should be the one who is, should be baptized by you. You know what Jesus answered? Do it, John, so that all righteousness can be fulfilled. The Son of God submitted Himself together with all the sinners, even though He was the sinless one, so that all righteousness may be fulfilled that submission. You know what it means for Jesus to line up together with all those sinful people to be baptized? Because the baptism is unto repentance, right? Jesus has nothing to repent. And I just want to explain to you the, the poignancy and the depths of what it means for Jesus Christ to submit himself to be baptized, I want to share with you this real testimony of Dr. John White, who was the professor of psychiatry from the University of Manitoba in Canada. He's passed away now. I remembered him coming down in the early 80s together with the John Wimber team to Singapore. And I was there, Pastor Lee Chu was there, and we were there to hear him. And I remembered that he shared with us this testimony how the day before he was walking along the streets of Singapore and suddenly around mid-afternoon, he had a very severe tummy ache. So he was waiting and looking for the nearest clinic and he saw a hospital and people were there. So he went into the hospital and lined up to be seen in the outpatients. But little did he know that he went... The hospital he went to was the Middle Road Hospital in Singapore, which it was a VD hospital, a venereal disease hospital. No more now. And now they have torn it down and condominiums are being built as always. But as he lined up, I remembered him sharing. He looked around, he said prostitutes all over, pimps. There. And he was wondering, what is happening? He didn't know, you see, it's a VD hospital. I'm sure the prostitutes and the pimps are wondering, ha, huh, this dirty old man, huh? Mat Saleh, why a dirty old man, huh? lining up to be checked up. Huh? And at that moment, the Spirit of God spoke to Dr. John White. Do you know how the Lord felt when he lined up to be baptized with sin? sinful people. Now you know. The sinless one lining up submitted himself to be baptized like everybody else and yet he had no sin. Now you know. Why did the Lord do it? Submission. And he obeyed so that all righteousness may be fulfilled. That's why heaven open. This is my son. I'm very pleased with you. 
Let me say this to you, friends. When you and I want to operate under an open heaven, we have to submit. Meaning, if God asks you to do something, do it. Don't fight with God. But pastor, I don't understand. I'm not clear. And moreover, it costs me. Do you not think it cost Jesus to do that? But he submitted. He obeyed. And if the Son of God had to submit and obey, how come you don't? How come you still fight? How come you think you're so great? Maybe that's the reason why heaven is not open for you. And I believe in my spirit, humbly, sincerely. It is the heart and the delight and the desire of God that God opened the heaven for us, but we have to submit. S-O-P. And I want scripture to explain scripture. Hebrews chapter 5 encapsulates everything that I share with you as if to reinforce this, this important key of an open heaven over our lives. And it's God's delight, you see. The amazing thing is God wants to bless you. And Hebrews chapter 5 says, come on, let's read it with me. Will you do that? Come read with me. Will you read with me? So that you don't think it's Pastor Chu says, no. Hear the word of the Lord. Take it. Make it your own. Understand? All right, let's read together. Huh? Those on the balcony as well. You do that with, with me? I'll read it loud, convincingly. One, two, three. During the days of Jesus' life on earth and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his son though he was, from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The key word is reverent submission. He submitted. He obeyed. Do you know Revelation, I mean, Deuteronomy 38, right? During the day, there were 12. I talk about open heaven the bounty of the storehouse, God will bless the work of your hands, and all the 14 verses of blessing. Wow, praise God, I want that. Remember, it's predicated on verse 1. When, if you obey and follow all my commands, submit, obey. Very, very important. And thirdly, seek the face of God. Pray. Pray means seek God's face. Pray means come before God acknowledging our need for Him. Pray means acknowledging that we are dependent on God. Seek His face. Now, turn back with me to 2 Corinthians, Second Chronicles verse 7 as I bring this message to a close. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. The third SOP is to pray. Very simple one. Uh. Everybody says submit, obey, pray. One more time. Submit, obey, pray. When you and I do this, we operate under an open heaven. So in verse 13, he says, when I shut up the heavens, God says, there is no rain. You have obstacles. You have problems. You have issues. And not only that, locusts will come and devour the land. Plague will come. Sickness will come. Plague. It's not God's desire that we are sick. It's God's desire that we are well holistically. Mentally, physically, emotionally. All of this will go and heavens will open if, verse 14, my people, meaning you and I, 
who are called by my name will humble themselves and what? And what? Absolutely. Pray. Seek my face. Seek the face of God. That's why we ask you to come for prayer meeting. Why? Because I myself acknowledge that even by myself, sometimes it's so hard to pray. But collectively, in the presence of God, wow, it's amazing. We can spend hours and we delight ourselves in the presence of God and we enjoy His presence. I want to encourage you to come for the prayer seminar in the, sometime in June by Dr. Julius, Pastor, Pastor Julius Subi. When we talk about prayer altars, when you learn how to pray, and we pray together, OJT, on the job training. We pray so that your prayer life is strengthened. Register for it. Of all the, 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 the seminars that we have, register for this one. And I can say the people like him and Don Molindi have changed the spiritual landscape of this church. And this church is now a praying church. Many people are praying. Come. Don't freak out. It's on night meetings anyway. Learn to come to pray. You know something? One other, one other reference in the Bible talking about open heaven and prayer is Peter. Peter. Peter in Revelation, in Acts chapter 10, when he was at the rooftop, what was he doing? Praying. Praying. And as Peter was praying on Acts chapter 10 on the rooftop, what happened? Heavens opened. And God spoke to him. Do you remember to go and reach out to Cornelius? He resisted, right? So what did he do? Submit, la. obey. La. And that's exactly what he did. And the Holy Spirit fell upon the Gentiles. Everybody say, submit, obey, pray. What will happen? Three things. There will be restoration. There will be revelation. There will be resources. God will restore back to you the years the locusts have eaten. Everything that is yours that has been taken away by the evil one, God will give it back to you. But it's not automatic. You submit. You obey. You seek the face of God. And God will then give you revelation to know what to do and what not to do and when to do and how to do. And God will back you up with heavenly resources, including angelic intervention. Not your right, but your portion as a son and a daughter of the living God. I'm going to close and I will give the altar, open the altar. But before I do that, let me share with you some practical testimonies that whatever I say is not theoretical. You can have it. So that when the heavens are shut, there's no rain, locusts come, plagues come. That is never God's delight. Because God's desire is heavens open. There is resources, revelations, restoration. Curses will go, light will come, productivity, multiplication, good health. And I'm not talking about a prosperity gospel. It is your portion. Don't be apologetic about it. But it is important. We submit. We obey. We pray. This morning as I woke up, I woke up very early. I couldn't sleep, maybe because of the jet lag. I received this mail. I don't even know whether you are here, Cynthia. Cynthia sent me this mail. And how he said, Pastor, and I believe it's got affirmation to me to share the right message for you. He said, Cynthia, you remember you prayed for me a few months ago. I've got stage 4 cancer of the lung. 
But I went for a scan yesterday. And he then mailed me the result of the MRI scan. Every single deposit in the lungs of God. How could it be? How could this be? Stage 4. Today is all God. And I say, thank you, God. Thank you. It works. And I will show you two pictures. One of them is Victor and Jenny on my left. And I've got their permission to share these testimonies. Jenny has got PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome or what we call the stein Leventhal syndrome. She's infertile. So she was on Clomid therapy for, year, for some time, but didn't succeed. But in one of the meetings, she came forward and answered an altar call, and I prayed for them. Today, Jenny is pregnant. Her due date is sometime in July, August. But the other one, Jamie Suhu and Joseph, is more miraculous. They were infertile for seven years. Everything that they have done, no avail. But during last year's 40 days of prayer and fasting, Joseph and Jamie Suhu sought the face of God and prayed and fasted 40 days. And at the end of the 40 days, not only did Joseph not grow weaker, but instead he grew stronger. And Jamie was pregnant, is pregnant. And I don't even know whether he has delivered now. That was before I went. Come on, let's give out a good clap offering. Shall we do that? It works, my friend. It works. You take it. Submit. Obey seek the face of God. Let's pray. Just spend a moment of quietness before God, before I open the altars. I know in my spirit that God is indeed working in this church. Don't take it lightly. Don't trivialize the word of God because it is God's desire to give you the best not at your terms but God's terms and God's terms are not difficult understand they are not difficult they are doable they are doable very doable one. and God only requires that you and I submit but you say pastor I don't understand you don't have to understand you and I may not know the full answer to what lies ahead all we need to do is to humble ourselves. Ask God to take away the veneer of spirituality, the pride, the walls must be broken down. Obey Him. What He says you do, you do. And seek the face of God. You don't have to plan so much ahead. We need to plan, huh? But trust God. Trust God. Submit. Obey. Seek God's face. And God will open the heavens. And God will restore back to us the years the locusts have eaten and reveal to us what needs to be done. And He will give us heavens back up. I don't know about you. That's what I want for myself, my family, this church and for my children. Spend a moment of quietness before I give the altar call. I want to give the altar call for those of you who really want to believe God for an open heaven in your life. And you say, God, I have been resisting all this time. I submit. I want to obey you. I want to strengthen my prayer life because I know you want the best for me and my family that nothing is impossible with you. They will begin to do that. Salvation, deliverance, 
restoration, revelation, angelic intervention will take place. And I truly will be blessed. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's all stand. Shall we do that? Let's all stand. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I want to ask you to open the altar even for your people, that even as they step forth in faith, even as in the other two services, Father, I pray that you will work a mighty work, Lord, in their lives, that barriers will break down, that we will appropriate and take what, not our right, but our portion, and appropriate it for ourselves, our family, our children, and our work, and our, and our business. So I'm going to open the altar and you feel the God speaking to you. Whatever issues that you are facing, step out in faith and appropriate what God has in store for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let's sing this song. Spirit break out. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit break out. The altar is open. Whatever your needs may be for break healing, for restoration, for wisdom, you come before God in faith. And I believe in my spirit that God will work in your life once again. That from this day forward, there will be a new season, a new beginning of your life. Amen. You have to believe that, my friend. You have to believe it. You don't believe it, it's fine. God is no less God. But God's delight and desire for you, even in a balcony, to come down, is the best for you, for your family, for yourself. Don't miss it. Don't walk away from God. Walk towards God and appropriate what is your portion. Amen. As a son and a daughter of the living God. Oh, Ramanda Kata. God is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Break our walls down Spirit break out Hallelujah Lord, Hallelujah Heaven come down Amen, Amen, Amen and Amen And Amen and Amen Spirit break out Thank you, Amen Dad, Amen Dad, Amen Break our walls down Genesis chapter 28 Jacob was running away from Esau he was a con man he was not perfect nor pure and yet he dreamt a dream as he slept he dreamt heaven open and a ladder between heaven and earth Angels were coming up and down that ladder. And as he began to wake up, you know what happened? He said, this is the gateway of heaven. And he called that place Bethel, the house of God. Jesus in John chapter 1 verse 51 took it up. 
He says here the two. In other words, now, not in the Old Testament. Now, you shall see heaven open, and angels coming up and down, ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Do you know something? All of you are living battles. All of you now are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus lives inside you. And angels come up and down under an open heaven over your life. What does it mean? It means to say that angels come down to take your request to God. They run up the ladder, and then they bring God's answer run down to you. you know. So that you know the wisdom of God. Here to do, you shall see heavens open, and angels ascending and descending from you to heaven. Take it, take it. Oh, hallelujah! Just spend a moment of quietness before God. Will you do that? We're not doing this for show. Understand? Whatever your situation may be, whatever it is, you appropriate it. Submit. Humble yourself before God. Is it difficult to do? If the Son of God can line up together with sinners, what are your pride? You tell me. When God's only one desire is to bless you, is to bless your family. Spend a moment of quietness before God before I close. Will you do that? Just spend a moment of quietness before God. Internalize and contextualize the Word of God for you this day. And I pray that I have communicated it to the best of my ability. Receive it, child. You receive it, my child. You receive it. I want to pray for those especially who you who wants children. You come forward at the end. Come to the center. Let me pray for you. You have been looking and praying for a child. You come. At the end of this service, I want to pray for you. Give me permission to do that. Will you do that? Just spend a moment of quietness as I close. As ministry goes to the front, the presence of God is here, understand? Let's look to the Lord as we close. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you, God, that whatever the needs there are in the front, in all the three services, nothing is impossible with you. Absolutely nothing. Generational curses will go. Darkness will go. Sickness will leave. Whatever it is that's negative will go. There'll be no locusts over our lives and our family and our businesses. Our children will do well and we will live long to have children and grandchildren in our arms. And the godly legacy will be passed down from one generation to another generation. And God will bless you and your family. You'll be strong. You'll be healthy. You will not suffer from insomnia. You will sleep well because the peace of God is with you. That is the portion of the son and the daughters of those who call on His name. Take it, friend. Take it. But submit. Obey and seek the face of God. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for all the three services and the various people that have been ministered to. Father, I've done what I could, my best. You take over. Bless your people. Bless every family that's represented in this church. Whatever issues they have, Lord, may they turn to you and you will answer them. Angels will take their request to the heavenly throne room and come back with a favorable answer. 
Because when the face of God turns towards them, the favor of God follows. And God's favor will be upon you, your work, your career, your relationship, your business, both now and forevermore. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face always to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His countenance towards you, not turn away from you, oh God forbid, but turn His face towards you and look upon you with favor so that you will always have the shalom of God over your life. Father, we receive it with thanksgiving honoring the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He who is called faithful, true and justice, who rides in the front of the armies of the living God. Thank you, Father. So separate us now with your blessing now. Bring us back safely to our homes. Go back home. Bless your families. Thank you, Lord. We pray all of this in Jesus' precious name. All God's people say, live quietly. Ministry is going on the front. If you need prayer, feel free to come forward and let us pray for you and with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.